Hallo, Distance Culling or Distance Fading usually means that you have a particle system or something similar and the further away it is from your camera, the less dense it becomes. So you have visually the same idea of how it would look, but it's a lot easier on the machine. And we can do it in geometry nodes. I will show you how. I have a plane here. I have a camera which I have parented to this icosphere. So it's a little bit easier to see because I will turn off this rendered mode. So it's a little bit easier on the eye. Let's click on the plane and see what I've prepared so far. A geometry node system with distribute points on face. And this is going to be fed into an instance on points node, which will instance some yellow cubes on my plane. Let me connect it and see how it looks. There they are, there are my yellow little cubes. And you can set up whatever you want. It doesn't matter what you choose from this dropdown or whatnot. What's important is that this node comes with this density factor input, which has this square little pack here. And we can essentially plug in a mask. Let's go over here and drop in this camera. And we have this location, which we are going to need. Obviously, if I want to move the camera, I want the density to react to it. I will search for a position node which will return position points for every imaginable point in the 3D space. So for example, this point would have a position and we could calculate now a distance between this point and the camera. And depending if we like the distance, if we say, okay, this point is close enough to the camera that it can be shown, then we say, okay, you can stay. And if it's too far away, then we say, okay, you're gone. I'm choosing a vector math node. I'm plugging in both locations or positions or however you want to call them and set it to subtract. And there we go. We've already constructed a vector from every point to the camera with this simple subtract command. Now, how do we measure the length of this vector? Easy as well, because there's actually a pre-built function here, which is the length command. And we're almost done. Now let's plug it to density and see what happens. Well, nothing has happened. Let me explain you why. So let's take a look at this point here and pretend that it is one unit away. So this length vector would now return one. And let's take a look at this back here and say it is 50 units away. So the length vector would return 50. Both of those values are well, higher than one or one. And since this density factor can only go from zero to one, it's going to clip at the high end or clamp or however you want to call it. And just, you know, just say, okay, both of these points are one. So both of these points have to exist. The first thing I'm going to do, because it's easier to me to work in this order, I will use a math node and multiply this length value with minus one. This point that was previously 50, for example, would now be minus 50. So it's the same thing in reverse. Now it would be clamped at the lower end because it's minus 50, it would automatically be turned into zero. So now it's gone. Now I will show you something interesting. Let's get another node and set it to add. First of all, I'm going to set it to zero. So no spoilers here. And now I'm going to slowly increase this value and watch what happens. Oh my God, a radius appears. How does this happen? Well, the point that was previously one is now minus one. And as soon as I add a value of two, for example, this minus one would now be a one. So it would be active. And the same for all of these points. So we have a value of 19. So let's say, for example, this point here was previously minus 18. And now since I've added 19 to it, it is now also one. However, this point, well, you can see it, but a point that previously was here, for example, could have had a value of minus 20. And now we have added 19 to it, which results in minus one, so still lower than zero. So this point is still invisible. And this way we can kind of gradually expand this selection. However, we wanted a gradient. How do we get a gradient now? Now our major problem is that right now everything is clamped and clipped. Like all of these values are way bigger than one and all of these values are way smaller than zero. So we have to do some mathematical magic to turn this gradient, which right now goes from 20 to zero into a gradient that goes from one to zero. How do I turn 20 into one? I divide it by 20. How do I turn 10, which is in the middle, into 0.5, which is like the middle of the gradient? I also divide it by 20. I, I'm essentially just taking the biggest point, which is right now at the center, and dividing the whole gradient at each and every point of the gradient through that number. At this point, I'm going to search for a value node, which is very simply just the reason that I now have an output and can connect it to multiple things at the same time. Now I've just reconnected this 20, so nothing changed. However, now let's make a little bit of space and let magic happen. I'm going to set this new math node to divide. And I'm dividing it 
through the same value. And ta-da, a gradient has appeared. Let's quickly test it out by moving the camera around. And as you can see, it follows around. You could already call it quits at that point and say it's great, it's a very easily controllable value. 20 is a value of 20 meters, so we can very precisely now control at which distance you don't want to have particles anymore. However, that's not enough for me. I want to control it a little bit better. A thing that annoys me, for example, is that right off the bat, the gradient is already in effect. That means these closer points, which are very, very close to the camera, already are partially reduced. The first couple meters could be full density, in my opinion. So let's do some math magic. I'm going to make a little bit more space, move it over here, and I'm just going to get another add node here. Oh, 20 is a little bit much. Let me quickly turn it to zero. As a matter of fact, let me just duplicate this value here um, and use that. Now, if I increase this number, you can kind of imagine like a, a little ring here Everything inside of this imaginary ring is now full density. And as you can see, if I add this number, this kind of inner full density ring increases in size and the gradient is still upheld. So it's kind of what we need. What annoys me a little bit right now is that I can create the inner radius where my density fall off begins, but I cannot really control the outer radius right now. It just follows. So I'm going to do something funky. I'm saying, okay, I'm adding a number here, so I'm also automatically adding it into this calculation, which previously controlled like the maximum gradient value. So I'm kind of muddying the waters here a little bit. Instead of just adding it and ignoring it, I'm going to add it here and I'm going to subtract it before I apply this value. So for this maximum gradient distance value, it's like this first value never existed. So let's just um, combine these into one and add another math node here. I'm going to set it to subtract and connect this value in there. And now as you can see, I can increase this inner density of my gradient without actually pushing the overall radius further out. And if I approach um, a value that is almost the same value as my maximum here, or well, exactly 20, now I have the same harsh fall off that I had initially before I even applied the gradient. And well, as soon as I overstep it, now the entire thing flips around, which we don't really want, but you know, just to keep in mind. Now there's just one more thing that I want to make a little bit better. So we've already observed if I set it to the same value as this slider down here, we have full density without a fall off. And if I set it to zero, it is like this thing never existed. So we have like the initial point where we have a complete gradient from the start of the camera position up until the outermost point. And with this in mind, I'm going to add a new mix RGB node. I'm going to combine these two value outputs here and put it in between there. Let's actually put this into the lower input and into this upper color, I'm going to put a black value, which is the equivalent to zero. Um, and now into this value, for now I'm going to just feed back in the 20 that I had initially and now I have a slider which is a lot easier to understand and use, I think. A thing that you can keep in mind is when I set it to 1, suddenly this entire thing disappears. How did that happen? It's a little mathematical problem that has to do with rounding errors. So as you remember, if I put it to a value bigger than 20, this thing flips around. If I turn it to smaller than 20, we have this initial thing. And if it's exactly 20, sometimes Blender can be a little bit confused and it just disappears. So in order to make sure that it will always work, I'm just going to duplicate yet another math node. I'm going to set it to subtract. And just from this value, subtract a very tiny value like 0.01 or something. And now, no matter what I do, it should always be there. And well, last but not least, because now I'd always have to adjust this value when I uh, move this value, I'm just going to delete it and instead plug in the same initial value here. Let's just do some cleanup. And if you want to get extra creative, you can even hit Control G, put them into like this little note group thing. And that's it. But I will recommend another tutorial, not by me, but by YouTuber Chris P, who in his tutorial showed a very nice method how to use camera culling when it comes to cutting off everything outside of the camera cone. So let me very quickly integrate uh, a note group that I uh, generated by following his tutorial. 
And now the particles not only get less dense the further away they are, they are also cut off outside of the view. And you should check out his video, leave a like, and since we're already promoting, hey, why not subscribe to me? I mean, come on.